Hi friends! So I'm here with another Friday book haul. Um, and I have a bunch of books from different places. So let's start with thrift books. So this is one of the child craft books. Um, you might be familiar with this series. This one is Holidays and Customs. I thought it would be uh, fun for pictures. It's got lots of pictures in it. Um, wow, that's cool. <laughs> I haven't really looked through it yet. But uh, yeah, I figured there would be some good Christmas stuff in here. Not that I'm doing Christmas journals right now, but I will be at some point. Uh, that might not be good. <laughs> we'll probably skip that. Halloween. That should be fun. New Year's Dragon. Cool. <laughs> Onions that walk. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Well, there should be some uh, interesting holidays in here that I'm not familiar with. <laughs> so that's always fun. Festival of Lights. I know that one. I'm not sure what order these are in. But yeah, lots of cool illustrations. And some photographs too that might work. But yeah, mostly I'm, I'm here for the illustrations. That's cute. Yep, so you get the idea. Um, yeah, the child craft books are really fun. Let's see when this one is from. Ooh, I like even that illustration. I really like that. This is 79, 1979. Okay, there's that. And then I have a couple of art books that it's going to be hard to cut into these, but that's why I got them. Um, I saw these both on um, Studio Lou. Cindy had both of them. And I think because, okay, she's in Canada and this artist, Glenn Lotes, is more of a um, local artist there. But, you know, I found these on thrift books. So this one especially is super cool. The Living Forest. I just, I love every page in here. There's not a lot of text, which I like. Um, look at that picture. Oh, that's so gorgeous. This I love, you know, and with the handwriting or the cursive and then all these different like a study of different angles rawr <laughs> so lots on the fox but other animals too deer bunnies birds uh warthogs okay or wild boar. Not sure what the difference is if there is one. Oh. So yeah, tons of pictures in here that would be really beautiful on um, journal cards, journal pages, tags, depending on how big they are. Oh, that's so cute. Might skip that one. <laughs> Oh my gosh, is that attacking a bunny? Fierce little creature and will defend itself against dogs, foxes, and even people. Rats and rabbits, even hares, who are 16 times as heavy as the little predator. Wow. Fierce. But he looks like he's just taking a ride. Yeah, let's go for a ride. Maybe not. Squirrel, 
That is a cute squirrel. That's nothing like the squirrels we have here. <laughs> we have ugly city squirrels. Gray squirrels. And there's way too many of them. I'm in Minneapolis if you don't know. Badger. The duck. Okay, so yeah, you get the idea. The living forest. And I think it's just by... It, that's funny. It doesn't show his name. Do, 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 do. It just shows the publisher, Harry Abrams. That's wild. Okay. Maybe it's not Glenn Lotz. Maybe it's this other dude. Okay, I'm wrong. <laughs> this one is Glenn Lodes, but this one is, uh, however you say that, Reen Portvliet. How's that? Sounds kind of Russian. Okay, so that's that one. And then we have this big one, The Art of Glenn Lodes. Very big. Nice thick pages, too. And these are more, um, I guess it is kind of a different illustration style. I should have noticed that. Whatever. <laughs> um, there is more text in here, but there's still definitely enough illustrations to be worth getting. I think this was like $10, something like that. It was very reasonable, I thought, on thrift books. Ooh, wow. Squid. That's pretty. Okay. So, oh wow. Aww, that's so sweet. Eastern Bluebird. Stellar's J. Lots of different birds. Mountain goats, wow. Bears. Looks like he disturbed a beehive. Or a wasp nest. Or paper wasps. Ooh, I hate those things. We used to get those when I lived in Arizona. They would build their nests right under the eaves. So you'd come outside, right out the door, and there'd be a wasp nest right there. Not fun. Okay. Oh, that's really pretty. I love moths. I think I almost like moths better than butterflies. Just because they're, I don't know, they don't get as much attention as butterflies, you know. But they're still really gorgeous and they're very tricksy. I like how they trick, trick their predators with their markings. Aww, little mousey, dear mouse. Dear little mouse. Woodchuck, that is a fun picture. <laughs> you just want to squeeze him. So I'm just flipping through here so you can, um, you know, see what pictures are in here. And if you might want to look for this book yourself, if it would be worth it. Oh, these are some nice little pictures. Otter, raccoon, or trash panda. Although he looks like a wild raccoon. He's not in the city. Uh, 
Okie doke. So there's that gorgeous big book. What have we got next? This was another one that Cindy had found um, in her thrifting and I found on thrift books. Uh, the Cuckoo's Haiku and Other Birding Poems by Michael J. Rosen, illustrated by Stan Fellows. There's the thrift book sticker. That should be easy to get off. But I probably don't even need to because I'll probably take this library binding off. I wonder if there's any... Oh, that's kind of a nice, really nice color on that cover. You could easily use that for a journal cover and just like cover the the middle part with something. But yeah, I love that modeled watercolor look. That's neat. Yeah, I loved the the colors in this book. I think that's one reason they I bought it after seeing Cindy flip through it. Nice. Yeah, so there's n not just big things, but there's, you know, little things too. Little flowers, little bird. You could like cut that out by itself. Morning dove. Summer. Okay, so it's divided into seasons. Neat. Oh, that's pretty. I like how he's got the smaller one and then the bigger one. And you could easily like fussy cut or tear that owl, heron. Love herons. They're so cool. So graceful. These kind of creep me out. Grackles. <laughs> it's their eyeballs. They're just so intense. <clears throat> Cedar waxwing. Having a little chomp on a berry. <clears throat> oh, this is cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. Need some water. Okay. Yeah, this is cool how he's like walking upside down on the branch. <laughs> Starlings. Yeah, those are cool too. That's so neat how they form different shapes in the air in their big flock. It's like, how do they know when they all turn at the same time? It's like a choreographed dance. Robin. Cuckoo. I mean, even these pages, those are so cool with the colors but I would still probably use this side. Maybe you could fold it, you know, like use, use both sides, you know, cut it out like that and then fold the top and the bottom up and you have that cool blue, I don't know, just an idea. Wild turkey. Arr. Okay, so there's that one. Oh, neat. And there's more info in the back about the birdies. So there's that one. That came from Queen's Library. Interesting. I'm assuming that's Queen's, New York. Okay, next. Okay, next 
we pause from Books for Crafting um, to bring you this special message about um, cool books to read <laughs> that I bought at the same time. So this one I bought um, because I follow Kate Sutton on Instagram. She's a really cool artist. I, I love her drawing style. And I first um, found her through, a, I think it was a Domestica course, you know, an online art course from Domestica. Those courses are so great. They're very reasonably priced and um, some are better than others, but yeah, I really liked her, um, just her attitude and her outlook on things. Um, so she wrote this book, Drawing on Grief, Exploring Loss Through Creativity, and I pre-ordered it to support her and because I thought it sounded like a really cool book. Um, it's like exploring loss and grief um, for artists, kind of. It's, you know, it's got this very artsy feel, lots of drawings handwritten and then and then she's got kind of here is where you should draw it's really neat oh and some cool quotes too love that one And she tells the story of, I think it's her mother who died and it was, it was very hard for her. I think that's, I don't know, it's probably different for everyone, but I know it was harder to lose my mom than it was to lose my dad, to be honest. I mean, I was close to both of them, but I don't know. Mom is pretty special. Your absence has gone through me like a thread through a needle. Everything I do is stitched with its color. W. J. or W. S. Merwin. Write a letter to them. I've thought about doing that before, you know? Just when you have those moments when you're like, you want to share something with that person who's gone and for a minute you don't remember that they're gone and you're like, oh yeah, I want to tell mom about that book. She would really like that book. And then you remember, kind of hits you hard, like, oh no, they're gone. I can't share that with them. But you could, you could write a letter to them. I think that would be cool. Mom was my home. Oh, that's so beautiful. So yeah, lots of um, kind of worksheets. I don't know what else to call them. Um, pages that you fill in with your own art and feelings about your grief interspersed with the story of her loss. So it's kind of like a memoir and a workbook at the same time. I think it's a really neat idea. So I wanted to support that. So I bought it. So I haven't read it yet, but I am going to. And I would encourage you to follow her on Instagram. Maybe check out her Domestica course if you want to draw more or get better at drawing. So she's at Sutton Kate on Instagram. Two T's in Sutton. Okay, so there's that one. And then I bought this. This is a modern classic. If you're not familiar with it, you probably should be um, if, you're, if you wanna be up on modern classics, I guess. Um, I've read this a couple of times. It is a graphic novel um, by Art Spiegelman 
who has won all kinds of awards. Um, and it's a story about his father surviving the Holocaust. He was in a concentration camp. I think it was Auschwitz. I don't remember for sure now, but it was a bad one. Not that any of them were good, um, but it's really interesting the way he tells the story. He makes the Jewish people mice and then he has different animals for um, kind of different people like the Nazis. I think they're pigs. I'm trying to remember if I can find a picture. Yeah, see, she's a pig. Okay. <clears throat> So it's really interesting. It's like he's trying, I think he's trying to get his dad to tell the story and it's hard to get the story out of him for, you know, reasons that you could imagine. There's also cats. I forget who the cats are. There we go. Maybe they're the SS. Anyway, I got, I bought this because I wanted to read it with my son. He is 14 now and he really likes reading graphic novels. So this should be an easy sell. Um, and just because of all of the stuff going on about banning books and, um, you know, taking books out of school libraries and all that garbage that's going on in our country right now. Um, so I wanted to kind of, um, you know, push back against that and um, teach him this book, basically teach him about the Holocaust. He knows a little bit about it already, but this is a pretty in-depth story. Um, it's not, it's not something you can sit down and read in one sitting. I wouldn't. It would be very painful. Um, so you kind of have to do it in chunks and take breaks. But it's worth it. It's <clears throat> it's an important story. It's well told. Um, and really, just really creative and beautiful artwork. Okay, so that is the end of our book recommendation segment. <laughs> Just wanted to tell you about those. Okay, so back to crafting books. I got these two from Thrift Books again. Um, I found out about this series, I think, from Cindy at Studio Lou also. I did not know about <clears throat> this series through Golden Windows, it's called. And I mean, look at the cover. Just the cover is gorgeous. I would not um, cover up this book cover. I would definitely leave it. Maybe cover that, I don't know, with a journal decoration or something, but this is such a gorgeous illustration. I wouldn't want to cover that. This can go. <laughs> Not too attached to that. But again, look at that. That's really neat. I love it. I love how busy it is, you know, it kind of reminds me of Richard Scarry a little bit. Okay, so this was from 1958. Um, there's a whole series of these too, just like the child craft ones. Um, and I think I picked one that was, you know, fictional stories as opposed to like nonfiction, I guess. Um, so yeah, it looked like it had a lot of cool illustrations, very colorful, also nice size of the type in the text if I want to um, use that, you know, pull out like the way Cindy does, she pulls out phrases and uses them on tags and stuff. I really like that idea. Monkey. So lots of different stories and poems. Um, 
looks like a little bit of diversity, you know, stories from around the world a little bit. Um, which is pretty good for 1958, you know. Oh, look, Henry and Ribs, Beverly Cleary. Ribsy the dog. So yeah, I'll probably I'll probably get lost in reading this um, as I'm looking for illustrated by Maurice Sendok. See, distraction. I love I love Maurice Sendok's illustrations. So yep, if you're looking for children's books of that era from the 1950s, this is a really good series. Um, through Golden Windows, right? Yeah, Through Golden Windows. And I didn't have to wait too long once I put it on my wish list. So, yeah, not, not too hard to find. And not super expensive. I think it was less than $10.00. That's not too expensive for me. For some books, you know, for this kind of book, I'm willing to pay more. Okay, so this, <laughs> I was just curious. This is in Korean, I think. Um, it's Richard Scarry. I just thought it would be interesting to see what the Korean version looks like of Richard Scarry. So this is what it looks like. So I think that'll be fun to use the little illustrations and even include the Korean captions um, or, you know, parts of the story just for fun, for something different. I like this book too because it's got littler pictures. You know, I have a couple that have like really big illustrations that take up most of the page in this size book. and. It's hard to use those in a standard size journal, which I consider this like nine by six. Um, I think that's probably, yeah, nine by six. So this is what Richard Scarry looks like in Korean. Okay, so that's those two. Then I went to a garage sale. Okay, so <laughs> I was actually at um, ARC at the thrift store and I was checking out and I started chatting with the guy who was checking me out and he asked if I was... Uh, an accountant because I was buying an adding machine and I said no I'm a reseller which is something I'm just starting to do um, which is a, one reason I've been a little uh, slow on getting the videos out lately I'm trying to um, start up my reselling business uh, reselling stuff on eBay and so I had looked up this adding machine and, you know, it had a good, um, a good sell through rate and I was buying it and he asked me if I was an accountant. I said, no, I'm a reseller. And he said, oh, I am too. And so we started chatting about, oh, who do you watch? Oh, I watch Harry Tornado, who's really cool. If you are a reseller, you should watch him. Um, and so we're chatting and he tells me, oh, there's a garage sale about a couple blocks over from here. I was going to check it out after I got off work. And so my friend, I was out with a friend and hi, Sue. <laughs> and so we were like, yeah, let's go check out the garage sale. So we did. And I got a few books. <laughs> uh, they were a little overpriced, I think, for for garage sales. I mean, they were all $2. Um, I would have expected most garage sales, like 
50 cents, maybe a dollar. But these were old and cool, and so I didn't mind paying for them. So let's go through them. So here we've got a reader, round the year, with a super cool cover. Circusy cover with a clown, elephant, and cat. And fun pictures inside. Let's see, 1933. And I figured I could either resell these for more than $2 or, um, or use them myself. I probably, I don't need all of these. I have so many books like this. Um, but yeah, I figured a 1933 reader, I can sell that for more than $2 it, to, you know, anybody who collects those or to junk journalers like y'all who are watching so um yeah let's just flip through here nice big text nice big type i love this style of illustration with the little rectangles that is a cute bear <laughs> standing like a human totally like a human okay the big show. I hate clowns. Have I mentioned that? I think I have. I think I still have those dang clown buttons. Doesn't anybody want those? Come on guys. Somebody out there must like clowns. I gotta get rid of these things. They're gonna haunt me. <laughs> anybody who wants two clown buttons, let me know in the comments. Or email me. Actually, no, don't email. Well, yeah, you can email me because that goes to a non overfull email box. Oh, that's cute. Topsy and the squirrels. <laughs> I love her little. I guess it's a her because she's wearing an apron. Mother squirrel. Yep. Mothers always wear aprons, right? dogs. Do you like dogs? Heck yeah. All that yummy goodness for two bucks. Okay, next we have Life Around Us. The Better Living series. That's interesting. I haven't looked up any of these yet, but that sounds like a good series. Life around us. Oh, from Professor of Elementary Education, Robert K. Spear. The style of illustration reminds me of... Oh, I can't remember who it reminds me of. Oh, look at that. It's signed to Jane from Olga and Arthur, 1952. This is copyright 1948. Lots of stories with big type. Not as many illustrations. Okay, there's a big one. Hmm. A snail likes to walk on dirt, said David. Next, David brought a cup of water. Everyone watched him pour the water gently on the dirt. So that the dirt will be wet, said David. A little dry, right? To the stores for Mrs. True. A little old lady lived next door to Emmeline. Her name was Mrs. True. <laughs> These stories are kind of long. Wow, that's a... Uh, oh, I guess that's a hat. I hope it's a hat and not his haircut. Yikes. <laughs> Thanksgiving. Oh, that's interesting. 
That looks like a story from this is true. More Thanksgiving stories. Does that mean there's Christmas? Yay! Christmas story. I like that picture. Getting some mail. I love getting mail. Isn't it fun? I just love getting mail. I need to I need to start up my um oh, what is it called? Post crossing account. Send out some more postcards. Oh, that's pretty. That's a nice illustration. Wash day. Okay, so you get the idea. Here we go. And this, this is a find. Blondie and Dagwood Secret Service. It's in pretty poor shape, but check out this illustration. I love it. Oh, wow, somebody did a drawing. 1942 copyright. So there's a little drawing in it. Hopefully that's the end of the drawing. Wow. This has got to be worth something, right? I don't think I would chop this up. I would at least look it up first. can tell the difference in, um, let's see, 40s, that would have been 60, 80 years ago, and the illustration style today, because that comic strip is still going, not by the original artist, obviously, but... <laughs> Blondie had to wait, Dagwood. Oh dear. Dagwood flew down the stairs on his head. Oh, there's in the bathtub. Dagwood was enjoying a warm bath, reading the newspaper in the bathtub. <laughs> that reminds me, of my grandfather used to do that, read in the tub. He would sit in the tub for like an hour or more just reading a book. Not even the newspaper, but a book in the tub. I think it was just his way to get some private time. That Boy Johnny. Love that title. Let's see what the cover looks like. Oh, that's kind of neat. Is there anything on the back? Oh, Weekly Reader. Weekly Reader Club. I was in the Weekly Reader Club. This is from 1955. Or 1952. One of those. Selection of the Weekly Reader Children's Book Club. <laughs> Chasing his pants. So not a lot of illustration, but looks like pretty old timey story. Like, it doesn't take place in the 1950s, more like the 1890s, I don't know. Okay, so there's that one. The Secret of Indian Ridge. I think this is also another 
weekly reader or maybe not 1963 it's in good shape I guess it's not a weekly reader it's just just a book No, oh, there we go. There's an illustration, <laughs> but not very many illustrations. There was another one, another one. Okay. This would have appealed to me when I was a kid. The Secret of Indian Ridge. Just for fun. The Richfield Public Schools textbook. Wow. Okay, so that's from that's from here actually. Richfield is where this house was, where the garage sale was. The developmental reading series, a basic reading program. 1954, 1949. I'm guessing this is very basic. Well, not too basic. Small words, short words, illustrations on every page, almost. Color in black and white. Fun. Love the cover. That is that would be a great journal cover. This one is really falling apart, and it is. Hans Brinker or the Silver Skates, which is a Newbery Medal book, if I remember right. From my days of working in bookstores. I worked for many years in bookstores. Hans and Gretel. Okay. Hans Brinker. Where is the publication date. Hmm. Not super good quality paper. Like it didn't last. And the binding is falling apart. So I'm not sure when this one was published. I'll have to look up the original publication. Whitman Publishing Company. Hmm. Okay. This is another weekly reader. Gift from the Mikado. I'm pretty sure it is. Let's see the cover. Nice! That would make a great journal cover. Not too many illustrations. Ah, here we go. Weekly Reader, 1958 edition. Nice. Okay, another Weekly Reader. <clears throat> No children, no pets. Ooh, harsh. Nineteen fifty six. Oh, that's a great illustration. I love that. Okay. Professor Quincy examined the horrid object. <laughs> Jane listened with shining eyes. I don't think... <laughs> How do you listen with shining eyes? That doesn't make any sense. Okay. So, you get the idea on that one. 
And then we have two Christmas books, which are, I think they're both reprints. This one has Holly Berries with original illustrations by Ida Waugh. Here we go. Replica of the antique original 1881 edition. That's funny because it wasn't an antique when it was originally published. Why would you call it that? So it's got poems. Little poems, kind of small printing, but I've never seen this before, so I thought it would be fun to have. It doesn't look like it's all Christmas. It reminds me of the Kate Greenaway collection of poems. I used to have another reprint. Oh, that's cute. That's a little baby. Yeah, this this looks fun. Just to read. And maybe maybe chop up and use or maybe just keep. <laughs> but it's obviously not worth anything since it's um a reprint. I don't think it's worth anything significant. Geez, she's looking at that kitten like it's a rat. <laughs> Calm down, lady. Nobody's dog. Aww. And who's there? I think this is more definitely Christmas. like a different little poem on each layout. You mustn't watch for Santa Claus. It looks like a reprint, but it doesn't say. Maybe it says at the back. Nope, nothing. It's funny because this lady had a, a really old needlepoint magazine. Um, and I almost bought it, but then I realized it was like photocopies of each page and they were pasted onto older paper. It was kind of weird, so I did not buy that. It's like I'm not paying for photocopies. Okay, so I think that's it. I think that is it for the Friday book haul. So lots of fun children's books. You know I love children's books. So if you have any questions about these or uh, I don't know if you are just like I must have that book. Um, comment, email, email me, do all that stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this little haul for the week and I'll see you in the next video.